Good morning, and thank you for being here with me this morning. I am so excited that we are here together again. Won't you please become focused with me as we come before God and the Father, and we ask that he allows me to open my mouth and he bring utterance, that he fills me as an empty pitcher standing before a fresh flowing fountain, that he uses me and allows the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in his sight, that he sends down fresh manna from heaven, designed with us in mind, to stir up that gift within us that keeps us moving, up the Lord's highway towards our highest good. And for this, this morning, we say thank you. We say thank you, God. Today is the fourth Sunday of June. It is the last Sunday that we will be focused on imagination. Imagination is that connection between the heart and the mind. The apostle this month has been Bartholomew. The color is light blue. The idea is imagination and the faculty of the body is the spiritual eye, right between the two physical eyes. And this imagination is the language of the heart that reconnects us to the thio spirit of God, the divine nature of him that dwells within us. It strengthens our dunamis power. We are using this month our Dianoa part of the brain that sees in images and pictures, which allows us to vision God's plan for us, to hear his plan for us, to be participants in his plan for us. As a point of clarity, it is our quest to develop a synergy, if you will, where we have these working in tandem and strengthen our connection to God. As a point of clarity, this whole month we've been dealing with spiritual connections, spiritual awareness, and spiritual guidance. And this is what we're talking about because everything that you see with your physical eye was first seen with your spiritual eye and then manifested on this physical plane. So the primary point of warfare happens on the spiritual plane, not the physical plane. And where does it happen on that spiritual plane? In your mind. Before it is manifested on a physical plane, it happens on your mind, and then it's manifested as negativity in this plane. Remember the story of Job and how the devil approached God and asked, you know, he could take him down, and God said, do what you want to do, but don't touch his mind. As long as the devil was not allowed to touch Job's mind, he was not able to devour his soul. Why? Because Job was able to maintain his connection with God. And as long as he was able to stay connected to God, he was able to hear God's word. He was able to receive God's guidance. He was able to look beyond this physical plane and stay connected on a spiritual plane. You've heard the fa phrase that the idle mind is the playground for the devil. Well, that's why. That's how this happens. That's why, that's how strongholds start building in your mind. Because, see, the devil is using lies and deceptions to plant negative thoughts in your mind because you're not focused on Christ. And whenever your guard is down, he slips these negative thoughts in, and that, those are the foundations of how strongholds are built. A stronghold is just a faulty thinking pattern. It's based on lies and deception. Deception is one of the primary weapons that the devil uses because it's the building blocks for strongholds. It's as if the devil has fist in, fenced in one negative thought, one negative attribute, one bad habit, one weakness, and then a bit and a bit, a bit, a bit at a time, and then he constructs this fortress around it. He builds protection around it, and you feed those negative thoughts. Remember the wolf that you feed grows? So then now you're growing these negative 
experiences in your life because as a man thinketh, so is he. And what you think on a spiritual plane will surely become manifested on a physical plane. So yes, you might think, why are all these negative things happening? Because it's your thought pattern. It may be a stronghold that has implanted itself in your idle mind and built up a fortress around to block you from God's best. So how does he do this? He does this because you start believing the deception and that weakens your connection. And when your spiritual eye is intact, you can see, hear, and be guided by God's voice. You can see his vision of you. You can participate in his plan for you. See, Paul wrote a letter in Corinthians to his friends, and he told them to use their spiritual weapons of warfare. Let's go to the scripture. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 2nd through the 6th verses. They read, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thinking that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Okay, let's talk about that a little bit. See, he was saying to his friends, I don't want to come off like I'm being really bold here when I'm in your presence, but you treating us like I'm walking in the flesh. Many believers are not walking in the power and authority that God died to give them. When Jesus rose, he rose with all power in his hands. And once we are reconnected to him, we are able to reclaim our authority and power over our life. We are able to operate from a winning stance. It causes us to be a bit bold. We call those bold soldiers or zealots. So it says, for we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh because what we understand is that war is not happening with the flesh. It's a spiritual warfare. You have to first gain captivity over those negative thoughts before you can change your physical expression. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God, how through God, through that connection, which connects your dunamis power your imagination, and your thighs. Through God, you can pull down these strongholds. You can cast down imaginations, these negative imaginations built on deception and lies, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. See, because when you don't know better, you can't do better. But once you do know, that's what grows and that's what manifests. But it only happens that way if you maintain your connection. And then it goes on to say it gets really good. He says, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, what does that mean? You've heard that. Take back the things that the devil took from me. Yes, but this only happens when your obedience is fulfilled. It starts with you. You have to be obedient to the will of God. You can't know the will of God. Remember I was telling you your word is powerful. Stand on your word. Stand on God's word because his word will never return to you void. Well, you have to know the word to stand on the word. Remember that? You have to know the word, and if the devil can block you from the knowledge of God, he has essentially created a stronghold. Just as a point of clarity, I want you to know that a stronghold is basically 
just a faulty thinking pattern. And it's based on lies and deception. It's built up on deception and error. It's an incorrect thinking pattern that has molded itself into your way of thinking. And these strongholds have the capability to affect your feelings and how you respond in various situations in life. And they play a large part in your lack of spiritual freedom because they it's a stronghold it's a fortress built around that it's almost as if the devil is saying ha 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 you can't touch this and the more that keeps getting fed the stronger it gets it's why some people develop reoccurring negative habits that ultimately lead to demise those are strongholds but spiritual warfare happens in the mind and God has given us power to break these spiritual blockades down and stop them from holding you back so you can start living freely remember he came that we might have life and life more abundantly so you know what we find is that many believers are not walking in the power and authority that God gave them Spiritual warfare and strongholds are designed to keep you from accessing your heavenly rights. They are designed to keep you spiritually bound. But we can have deliverance through spiritual warfare. God has given us those tools. He's given us the power of our spoken word. He's given us prayer. All you have to do is pray, decree, and de declare. Pray, decree, and declare. Pray, decree, and declare. P-D-D. P-D-D. P-D-D, not P-Diddy. <laughs> Y'all know I like to laugh. But you pray and you seek God's face. You ask the Holy Spirit to guide and direct your prayers. You use your words to decree and declare and establish the authority of God's word in your life over the negative influences of the devil or negativity or however, whatever you want to call it. You can declare authority over anything that's keeping you from being connected to God. This means all those negative thoughts, sending them back to their negative nothingness from whence they came. This means <clears throat> that you need to actively replace them with positive thoughts positive thoughts and positive activity. I challenge you today to live what you believe. Live what you say you believe because actually you are living what you believe. Live your life faith-filled and live it like you believe the words in the Bible. Remember, this is not about memorization. It's about revelation and transformation. Amen. My will for you, as always, is that you remain Christ-centered and you continue to be blessed.